Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel is the official digital card game simulator, described by Konami as a place where you'll be able to duel at the highest level. And when they say highest level, they are not kidding. The first thing you need to know about Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel is that it's not beginner friendly. If you are someone who hasn't played in a long time, has only ever watched the anime, or <laughs> God forbid, this is your first ever experience of Yu-Gi-Oh! You need to know right now that you are jumping in at the deep end. This seems like a weird thing to open with, but I don't want you to feel discouraged if your first online duel seemed a little bit unfair. Bro. Really? 15 negates? But if you're willing to put the time in, and learn all the ins and outs of this competitive game, I wholeheartedly believe that there is a lot of fun awaiting you in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Saying all that though, if you would like a more beginner-friendly alternative or a game that focuses more on the anime, I would recommend any of these games. But if you're still up for the challenge, I want to welcome you to The Idiot's Guide to Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Master Duel is available on console, Steam, and mobile. The cost of this game is absolutely nothing. This is a free to play game. So okay, what's the catch? Well, surprisingly, Master Duel is extremely free to play friendly. If you use your in-game currency correctly, you'll easily be able to make a competitive deck straight away. Then if you're smart with your resources from here on out, you should be able to build at least one new deck every month. Well. That seems to be the average anyway. So you've downloaded the game. The first thing that is presented to you are some tutorials. If you have any experience of dueling, you can skip these if you want to, as it's just the basics on how to play. And you still get the 1000 gems and a free deck reward, even if you skip them. Following this, you'll be given the choice of three decks that you can claim as a reward. Power of the Dragon, Synchro of Unity and Link Generation. In all honesty, your decision here doesn't matter, since we are never going to use any of these decks. However, if you do want some advice, just pick the one that matches your level of experience. You're an old school player, pick Blue Eyes. Dropped off before Pendulum and Link, grab Synchro. Modern player, grab the Link deck. Now with that out of the way, we are in the game. The main menu presents us with four core options. Duel, Deck, Solo and Shop. The four sub-options up here are notifications, which will be messages from Konami, letting you know about updates and events. Missions, this is where you'll be able to see your tasks to earn extra gems and in-game cosmetics. You want to check this often. Gift box, this is when Konami likes to be generous and hand out some freebies. You'll find them in here. Friend, this is where you can add your friends. Simple enough. And finally, we have sub-menu. You can mess with your settings in here and also check out the current ban list. Oh, and we also have our profile. If you click on this, it will show you your in-game stats, all of the dual replays that you've saved as well. You can customize your cosmetics and just what your profile looks like. So then now, what is the first thing you want to do? Well, that is enter solo mode. The solo mode is a way for you to experience a variety of different archetypal decks, learn their storylines, but most importantly, unlock free stuff. The first thing we are going to do is fully finish the dual strategy solo missions. By completing all of these stages here, you will be rewarded with powerful meta cards, a nice cosmetic, a mate, as well as 2,400 gems. However, that's not all. By doing all of these, you will also have done some missions that you can claim to get even more gems and crafting materials. Now, with the dual strategy complete, we actually have everything we need. If you'd like to complete more story missions, you absolutely can. Here are spoilers, all of the story missions that you can unlock in the game as of the time of this video. If any of these stories include an archetype that you plan to build for your first deck, I would recommend that you complete that one first before moving on to the next part, as it will give you a head start in your deck building. Oh, and if you wondered what these things are up here, well, they are orbs. They come in dark, light, earth, water, fire, and wind flavors. You unlock these simply by playing through the solo mode. What are they used for? To play more of the solo mode. Simple enough, right? Good. Well, it's time now to build your deck. First things first, let's clarify what have we been gathering up all this time? Well, there are two types of currency in this game, gems and crafting points. Gems are earned by playing the game. They're the most important currency in the game, as this is what is used to purchase packs and items from the store. Do not waste this resource. I can't express that enough. 
Keep listening to this guide and I'll tell you how to spend it correctly. The second currency is crafting points. This is the second most important resource. You can see how much you have of it when you build a deck. They come in normal, rare, super rare, and ultra rare crafting points. What are they for? Well, these are used to make any card you want in the game. To make a card, it will always cost 30 crafting points. However, what rarity it is depends on what type of crafting point you will use. How do we get this resource? Well, the main way to get it is by dismantling cards you don't need. A dismantled card is worth 10 crafting points of whatever rarity it is. So essentially, you need to dismantle three cards to make one new card. However, cards that have a special finish are worth more. Let's say Cyber Dragon Infinity here. Its normal version is 10 CP. Its glossy version, 15 CP. Its royal finish version, 30 CP. So if you don't care about rarity, you can always dismantle your higher rarity cards. I'm going to throw this out right now. Normal and rare CP, it's plentiful. You'll always have enough of that to build a deck. However, super rare and ultra rare CP, that is not. Right, with that all out of the way, it's time to finally build our deck. First, let's delete all the decks already in here. Honestly, they're not any good, but it's up to you. I just get rid of them, make it tidy. Now, let's build our first deck and oh, stop right there. The most important decision you will make in the game and one that you have to make right now and stick to it. What deck do you want to play? You can't be indecisive here as we only have so many gems to build your first deck. Think long and hard about this. What are you going to have fun playing with? Obviously, this decision will vary between people. For example, if you have fun by winning, then maybe you want to build a top tier meta deck. What's top tier? Well, looking at websites like masterdoolmeta.com, if we see their tier list, we can see a list of the most well-performing decks in the game currently. So maybe you want to build one of those that you like the look of. However, perhaps you don't like the look of any of these decks. And maybe you have a favorite archetype. So why not then build a rogue deck? What's a rogue deck? It's basically any deck that's not really top tier. For me, for example, that's what I did. My favorite archetype is Cyber Dragon. So I decided that my first deck would be a Cyber Dragon deck. I know for a fact that I'm always going to have fun with them, even though they may not be top tier. However, I also know if built right, they can absolutely compete at a high level. Just keep that Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon away from me. If you're going to go down this route and you've picked the archetype that you want to build, well, to get a little bit of inspiration for your deck, maybe use a website like yugiohprodex.com or masterdoolmeta.com. Find a build of the deck that you want to play. Use that build as a template to build your own around. Or if you want to, you can use the in-game deck finder tool to copy and paste a deck that somebody else has made in Master Duels. For the purposes of today's video, that's what I'm going to do. I found a Cyber Dragon deck I like in Master Duel. I'm going to copy and paste that. And you know what? That's the deck I'm going to play. So here we are. I have all of the cards added into my deck. However, you'll notice I don't own any of the cards. So what is the best way to get them? You want to pick one super rare or ultra rare card that is a part of your core archetype. For my Cyber Dragon deck, I'm going to choose the super rare Cyber Dragon core. Now I'll click on it and select generate. When I generate the card, it will use 30 of my super rare crafting points to make one copy of it, which I now own. But more importantly, because I have crafted a card that is a part of an archetype, I will have unlocked a secret pack that this card is from. In this case, Pelescent Cyber Dragons. Now, by looking inside of that pack, I can see that about 80% of all the cards I need to make my deck are actually in this pack. So, I guess... It's time to start spending in the shop. Here in the shop, you will see tabs for pack, structure deck, accessories, and special. In pack, we have normal, secret, and bonus. Normal pack contains some limited time packs, which have some popular cards in them. The master pack contains close to every single card in the game. If there is one huge piece of advice I can give you, do not spend your gems on any of these packs. Why? We see the problem with them is that there's just too many cards in them. And you're never going to get the cards that you want unless you're insanely lucky. I mean, while the limited packs only have 80 cards in them, again, you're probably not going to get the cards you want. Over the master pack, that has over 7,000 cards in it. It's not worth your gems. Honestly, never buy this pack. Next up, the structure decks. Well, these could be a worthwhile investment, but only if the deck you want to make 
need some of the higher rarity cards from in here. If that is the case, go ahead and pick up one to three copies if you want to. Otherwise, I would recommend skip these if you don't need them. The accessory tab, well, it's just all cosmetics. If you want to treat yourself to maybe one or two things from out of here, go ahead, but do it a little bit later. Get your deck built first. So now we're at the special section, and this is where I want you to buy something. You must buy the dual pass. The dual pass is a battle pass. It rewards you with gems and crafting points, as well as some cosmetics, simply by playing ranked. It is extremely easy to finish, and it also gives you your entire investment back if you complete it. But more importantly, the reward of crafting materials, since they are such a hard resource to get, is so important. So, purchase one is done. Let's head next to the bundle deals. You see these three? Buy all three. Each one of these will give you 10 Master Packs and a Meta Yu-Gi-Oh card, which are Solemn Judgment, Lightning Storm, and Ash Blossom. These bundles are good value, and all of the cards you're going to get from these, you are going to be using later for disassembly for crafting materials to build your deck. So, with purchases 2, 3, and 4 out of the way as well, it's time for the big one. Let's head to the secret pack section, and let's look for the pack we unlocked when we crafted our super rare card for our deck. So here is the pack I'm going to be going into, Pearlescent Cyber Dragons. Let's just start buying in bulk, shall we? The idea now is to get as close to all of the cards we need as possible using pretty much all of the gems we currently have. Keep buying these packs until the core of your deck is pretty much complete. If there are like one or two cards you are missing, eh, that's fine. We can craft those later. But make sure you own now about 90 to 95% of the deck. And fun fact, after you've bought all your secret packs, if you go back to your missions, you're probably going to have earned even more gems from opening packs. So now we are back looking at our deck, and you'll notice we are missing some cards from some other packs, like Galaxy Soldier here, who is from the Galaxy Pack. And you'll also notice there are a lot of staple cards missing that are only available from Master Packs. So how do we get these? Well, it's time to start crafting. This mantle. All of the cards you have pulled from the Master Packs earlier that you will never use. Dismantle all of them. Then, use the crafting points you got from those to make the cards that you need. So as you can see, I'm just building the rest of my deck using my crafting points. Important note, whenever possible, I would recommend prioritizing the creation of staple cards from here on out. What's a staple card? For those that don't know, it is basically a card that is able to fit in almost any deck and is also very valuable. It's up to you which ones you want to craft, but if you want a quick top 10 list of splashable staple cards, I would recommend Maxi, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, Forbidden Droplet, Called by the Grave, Infinite Impermanence, Nibiru the Primal Being, Harpy's Feather Duster, Effect Veiler, Crossout Designator, Solid Judgment. There's a lot of other cards you could probably make, but it's just a nice little handful you can pick from. So then now, with your deck 100% complete, it's time to take it into ranked mode. Now that we're in ranked, we can start queuing up against other duelists around the world with our newly crafted deck. As we duel against opponents and we start winning, we'll move up in the ranks. We start from Recruit, then we move into Bronze, then Silver, then Gold, and finally, as of the time of this video, the highest tier possible, Platinum. Note that by ascending, the difficulty of the game will increase, as there will be better duelists each time you move up to the next tier. Platinum is of course the most competitive, and you'll find that in this tier, misplays they'll be punished more severely than they would in, like, gold or silver. However, what are we getting from climbing? Well, we're being rewarded with more gems, along with our battle pass leveling up, giving us even more gems and more crafting materials. So the goal now, for the rest of whatever season you're in, is to accumulate as many gems as possible and as many crafting materials as you can, so that for the next season or the next event that is going on, you can build yourself a brand new deck. Because... Variety is the spice of life. And of course, if your deck is underperforming and you want to make little tweaks to it, you will also have some resources to get yourself some more cards to increase your deck's power. And guys, with that, from this point onward, you're on your own. Best of luck in your Master Duel journeys. I wish you all of the best and may the heart of the cards guide you and all that jazz. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Catch you later. Cool.